over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video is out. In this video, we talk about a bizarre controversy involving Navy at the 2008 Eagle Bank Bowl, and how the bowl game broke their contract. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, on with our feature presentation. There have been plenty, and I mean plenty of bad announcers throughout the history of the NFL. You know who they are. You know who I'm talking about. These are the guys that make you want to mute your television, make you want to listen to anything else, and make you want to cut off your own ears so you don't have to suffer for the next three hours. For every great announcer like John Madden and Jim Nance, you've got your guys that have no business being in front of a mic and either offer no insight, get things very wrong, or seem to have no grasp whatsoever of the English language. You have your Jason Wittens, your Dennis Millers, your Joe Greens. You have your guys that are just very bad at their job and make the viewing experience a not so pleasant one. But here's the thing with those guys. As bad as a lot of these announcers are, and trust me, they can be bad. At least they had a full season minimum to show what they could or could not do. Joe Green was quite possibly the worst color commentator of all time, and you can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And even he lasted a full season with CBS before they cut their losses and realized that this wasn't going to work out. Jason Witten was awful with ESPN, but he survived the entirety of his rookie season. Dennis Miller and that experiment on Monday Night Football did not work out, but he made it two years. You get the idea. Networks are not just going to let you go after your first broadcast because it was a bit shaky. No matter how bad it is, when you sign on that dotted line, you have to do something really, really bad and call the worst game ever and then some to actually get fired on your first day of the job. And that brings me to this game right here. It's October 12, 2014. It's week six of the NFL season and we have a big battle on our hands in the NFC North over at TCF Bank Stadium between the Minnesota Vikings and the Detroit Lions. Now on the field, not a whole lot happened in this game, as it was a relatively boring affair that wasn't seen in most of the country, unless you happen to be in Minnesota, Michigan, either of the Dakotas, the western part of Iowa, or Louisville, Kentucky, due to the Teddy Bridgewater effect. When the final whistle sounded, the Lions were veiled 17-3, as the number one defense in football put together another clinic, forcing three turnovers, holding the Vikings to just 212 yards of total offense, and sacking Teddy Bridgewater eight times, with defensive end Ziggy Ansah having a career day, causing tons of trouble with two and a half sacks and a forced fumble. But we're not here to talk about what happened on the field, because nearly a decade later, if you remember this Vikings-Lions rivalry game, you remember it for one reason, and for one reason only. This man right here, Mike Goldberg. Because on this day, Goldberg called his first ever NFL game, making his NFL on Fox play-by-play -play debut. And on this day, Goldberg would call his last ever NFL game, getting fired almost immediately after for just how terrible he was. Because this is the story behind what has to be Without a doubt, the worst broadcaster in the history of the NFL on Fox. Before I talk about the actual performance, and trust me, there are going to be tons of examples, so get your popcorn ready for that. We need some context to just talk about how the heck this even happened in the first place. How did Mike Goldberg, the famous UFC announcer for two decades, wind up calling an NFL game as the play-by-play -play man? Well, this wasn't exactly Goldberg's first foray into football, nor was it his first foray into doing play-by-play -play work for team sports, having broadcast a ton of NHL games, most notably with the Detroit Red Wings and the Minnesota Wild. He got the job as the play-by-play -play man for the Arizona Cardinals for their preseason games in 2008, calling games for a few years down in the Valley. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any footage of Goldberg calling these games, as even though footage exists of the preseason games, the audio is either that of the opposing team's broadcast or the radio broadcast. However, he was at least competent enough to keep the job there for a bit. 
He even got good reviews from some people on internet forums around the time. And he had worked previously as a sideline reporter for the NFL on Fox from time to time, calling eight games from 2000 to 2002. A lot of his games involved the Vikings, since he lived in Minnesota at the time. Two of his three appearances in 2000 were Vikings games, and both of his appearances in 2001 were Vikings games as well. Five of his eight games total as a sideline reporter were with the Vikings playing in some capacity. So weird coincidence how that worked out, and how he wound up calling a Vikings game as the play-by-play -play man in 2014. Now, was he any good at this job? Well, considering the fact that as a sideline reporter, you're supposed to ask questions when interviewing the coach, and he didn't ask a single question, I'm going to go ahead and say no. The offense, other than the fumble late, and then Carolina scores a different football game now. There literally wasn't even a question there. Not really something you see silent reporters do. However, he still had a good relationship with Fox, and the Fox executives really wanted to get him on a game as the play-by-play -play man, but they were waiting for the right time to do it. They would need a period where not a whole lot was happening in UFC, and where Fox had a bunch of games on their schedule, so he could slide in on the number 17. Goldberg had done games in NFL Europe, had done preseason Cardinals games, had done sideline reporting, and had done college football. In other words, he had been around the block in this sport. He just hadn't been in the booth for an NFL regular season game on network television. And that's what's about to make this whole ordeal so weird. A lot of times, with a bad announcing performance like Joe Green or Jason Witten, the guy's never done it before. He's getting his feet wet and trying to find his footing, and he's being thrown into the wolves in front of a national audience. Not Mike Goldberg. He had paid his dues big time, but hadn't gotten the chance. But in 2014, that all changed. Because in August of that year, when Fox announced their broadcasting teams for the new season, they announced that for two games, Goldberg was going to be on the call as the lead man. With Goldberg as the play-by-play -play man, Fox's number seven team was set. Goldie would call the week six game between the Vikings and the Lions, and would call the week seven game between the Vikings and the Bills. The wheels were officially in motion. And what followed was an absolute disaster of a broadcast that had to be seen to be believed. Okay, maybe I'm being a bit too harsh. I mean, we haven't even listened to the guy yet. Let's see the first play and see how it goes. The toss to Bell. Nope, the fake. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, come on, really? You got fooled on that? You got fooled on that play action toss? Have you never seen play action before? The ball is deflected. Nope, it's in his hands. Oh, this is going to be a long day, isn't it? Okay. Buckle up. All right, so there are three main problems with this broadcast on Goldberg's end. The first, and perhaps the most notable, was just how absolutely terrible his depth perception was. Perhaps the most important skill that a play-by-play -play man can have is to tell you how many yards they're picked up on the play. Seems pretty self-explanatory. If you have a play go from the 10-yard line to the 5-yard line, it's a gain of 5. Well... Goldberg was laughably bad at this, to the point where you genuinely wondered if he was calling this game from a different zip code. I'm not talking about him being off by half a yard. I'm not nitpicking him when he says the runner picked up a yard, when in reality, he picked up a short too. I'm talking off by multiple yards at a time, to the point where I, a person who wears glasses to see, could take off my glasses and call a better and more accurate game. Let's take a listen to some of these wonders, with some of them being way worse than others. If you want to make this fun, close your eyes, listen to the calls, and try to guess how many yards the player actually picked up on the play. Single sack. Trying to work up the middle. Breaks a few tackles. And he'll be close to a first down. Close to a first down? What? He picked it up by a full yard. Either the yellow line is drunk, or you're watching a completely different game. Troy Bell, the single back. And he'll get one, maybe two at best. He'll get a yard? He'll get two yards? Dude, he lost yards. 
This was a negative play. Here's McKinney. Trying to dance around and he'll be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Stopped at the line of scrimmage? He lost two yards. When someone says they got stopped at the line, that's a run for no gain. That is not a loss of two. That's stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Very different. Matt Asiata. And the pitch back. Patterson will be taken down around the line of scrimmage. If he was taken down around the line of scrimmage, that's not a line at that point. That's a giant rectangle because he picked up three yards on the run. Getting three yards is not, never has been, and never will be the definition of getting taken down around the line of scrimmage. The handoff over to the left side. Gain of three for Jarek McKinnon. Gain of three? He has to get to the 25 yard line to get three yards. He got one. The only way he would have gotten three yards would have been if he had the ability to stretch his arms like Michael Jordan at the end of Space Jam. Vikings have two timeouts. And nothing there. Again, when someone says that there's nothing there, you expect a run for no yards. This was a run that went for three. But as bad as all of those are, trust me, nothing compares to his magnum opus in the second half when Joyt Bell got the handoff on Detroit's first play of the drive. I'm going to play this one without audio, just so you can see what happened on the play. All right, now that you've seen it, guess how many yards Goldberg said this run gained? Go ahead, take a guess. Got a number in your mind? Good. Let's see the answer. In Angadejo, Lions start here midfield after the interception by Whitehead. Joy Bell with about a six or seven yard gain. I'm sorry, what? A six or seven yard gain? If it was first and ten, and he very clearly crossed the first down line, how are you getting six yards on an 11 yard run? That's like saying if I'm calling a baseball game and a player hits a home run to left field, and it's 3.30 to the left field fence, and I say he hit the ball 280 feet. That doesn't make any sense. The math does not add up. I have quite literally never seen an announcer be this bad at saying the distance than Mike Goldberg was. Again, it would be one thing if he said second and nine, and it was really second and eight. But this is another galaxy. That brings us to the second problem, and that was the fact that he got a bunch of names wrong, either in terms of the pronunciation or in terms of who actually made the play. Again, that's kind of important if you're going to be a play-by-play -play man. Let's just take a listen to some of these examples. For him from his own 20-yard line. And they give it to Jerome Fulton. Okay, two major problems here. Number one, there is no such player on the Vikings as Jerome Fulton. It's Jerome Felton. And even if it was Felton, that's not who the give was to on the play. The carry went to McKinnon. So not only did you get the name wrong, but you got the player wrong too. Good job. Solid drive to open the game for the Vikings. Looking end zone. And it's intercepted. Intercepted by Grover Quinn. Grover Quinn? Seriously? Grover? You're calling a football game here, Mike. You're not calling an episode of Sesame Street. Looking for a target. And he'll be sacked. Good coverage downfield. And the sack by Zeke Zigianza and Ndamukong Sue. Hold up. Ndamukong Sue? One of the best players in the NFL? And how do you pronounce his name? Fortunately, Sue makes another play later in the first half. So maybe I just misheard what he said. First and 15 for the five. And nowhere to go. Stopped immediately by Odomikin Sue. Oh god, no, no, I, I definitely heard that right. That is quite the butchering of that name. Bridgewater. Pressure again. He gets it away, and it's complete. What a play by Chase Ford. Chase Ford didn't make the play there, Mike. Rhett Ellison did. 
I mean, this is just terrible. My head hurts. Could this possibly get any worse? Lone set. And it's off a Detroit Lions player. The intended receiver was Golden Tate. Golden Tate? Are you actually kidding me? Golden Tate? He plays for the Lions! He plays for the other team! And you can't even use the excuse that your chart wasn't flipped to that side of the ball, since that wasn't the first play of the drive, and you got the name right the play before. If you played a drinking game with a professional like Jim Nance or Joe Buck, where you take a shot every time they get the yardage wrong or the player name wrong, you're staying relatively sober. I'm not taking the keys from you. If you're playing the same drinking game with Goldberg, you would be dead. And this brings us to the third problem, which was that when he wasn't getting the yardage wrong, and when he wasn't getting the player names wrong, he was getting basic info very, very wrong, to the point where you wondered if he even prepared. I know in interviews about what happened afterwards that he said that his problem was that he overprepared, but I don't know. I've done a ton of broadcasting work myself, and I've definitely had broadcasts that were kind of shaky, especially when starting out. But when I overprepared, it was more a matter of not knowing when to bring that information up and wanting to reveal it. It wasn't me ever getting basic information wrong. Let's take a listen to some of these blunders. On McKinnon, we talked about, and Patterson is a dynamic scorer. A dynamic touchdown scorer, eh? Guess how many rushing and receiving touchdowns he had at this point in 2014? Zero. If he was a dynamic touchdown scorer, then so am I. Hey, don't worry about that. Mike, Brendan, Peter, back to you. Uh, thank you very much, Joel. There was uh, a lot of talk about that exit from the stadium. Mostly, the Lions didn't want to talk about it. What are you talking about with the Lions' exit from the stadium in Buffalo from last week? That Lions-Bills game was in Detroit. You got the wrong stadium there. He likes this offense, and he's excited to work with Jim Caldwell. Wait, wait, wait. What? North Turner? The offensive coordinator of the Vikings is excited to work with Jim Caldwell, the head coach of the Detroit Lions? How does that work? Tell me how that works, where the Vikings staff and the Lions staff, despite being rivals, are working together. Please, I'm dying to know. Maybe he misspoke. As long as he doesn't make the same mistake again. North Turner, Jim Caldwell said quite clearly, I am very fortunate to have a veteran like Norv Turner on my staff. Yeah. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. All right, so you've gotten just about everything wrong so far this game. You've gotten the yardage wrong. You've gotten the players wrong. You've gotten basic facts and information that is a quick Google search away wrong. Anything else you have for me? Welcome back to Minneapolis. Third and 17. I give up. I give up. I don't even know what to say anymore. You got the down in the distance wrong by 12 whole yards. I'm genuinely amazed that takes skill to do. So yeah, everything about this game was a disaster. And understandably, afterwards, the complaints came pouring in. As Taylor Swift said two months earlier, haters gonna hate, 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 hate. And man, do the haters hate here because they show no mercy whatsoever toward Goldberg in his play-by-play -play debut for the NFL on Fox. This truly was a disaster that no one saw coming, at least not on this scale. I think people had doubts because his style for UFC was somewhat polarizing, but again, this was a guy that had done play-by-play -play for years. This wasn't just a matter of personal preference and not liking a guy. This was a universal bashing of a guy who was absolutely terrible at his job. Quite literally, I could not find a single person defending him for this performance. Scathing criticism from all corners of the internet. Lions fans and Vikings fans, in this very moment, were united on just how bad Goldberg was, with one writer for SB Nation calling it the worst broadcast of a football game I have ever witnessed in my life. And I can honestly say that he's not exaggerating. There is a fantastic and hysterical Reddit thread from the Lions subreddit about the criticism and how bad he was. And I'll leave a link to it in the description. And keep in mind, 
With the examples that I picked, I only scratched the surface. There were many more blunders. It truly was that bad. But as bad as Goldberg was, he was still in Fox's good graces. Fox knew that the broadcast wasn't good. They weren't oblivious. And Goldberg admitted years afterwards that the broadcast was a train wreck. But everything was still good to go for next week, when the Vikings played the Bills. It was now all about how Goldberg would respond to the criticism and improve on that disaster of a performance. Now, there are many different ways you can handle social media criticism. You can do nothing. You can apologize for your performance and promise to do better. You can make it a meme. You can even laugh it off and joke about how bad you were and a mistake that you made on the air. As for what Mike Goldberg did, yeah, he did not go with any of those options. Because instead, he decided to respond to the criticism with some good old-fashioned profanity-laced tirades. He immediately took to the replies on Twitter to call out anyone who bashed him and his lack of preparation for the game, and to anyone who dared to criticize him. Here's what Mike Goldberg himself had to say about this in 2018, four years after the fact. What got me on social media was when people started to say, do a little prep. Mm, yeah. Work a little bit. Do right. your homework. Because that's something that I did and did and did some more. And at that moment, Fox knew that they had a massive problem on their hands. It's one thing to just be really bad. But now, you're tarnishing the image of the company and the shield by cursing out fans who called you out. Because after Goldberg dug his own grave, that was all she wrote. It was all over. Fox replaced Goldberg for the Vikings-Bills game with Tim Brando. And that was it for Goldberg's NFL career. That was the first and only time ever that Goldberg did play-by-play -play for a regular season game. Goldberg would later say that Fox executives straight up told him when firing him that had he not sent those tweets out, that he would have kept his job for the rest of the season, which would have been that one more game. And I shot back, F you. Yeah. In the UFC world, that was very mild. That was timid. <laughs> right, that's right. In Fox Network, it wasn't. Okay. Do I wish I could have that back? Absolutely. Because I was scheduled to do another game in Buffalo a week later. Okay. I can guarantee you I would have had a great game. Mm -hmm. And the shitty game would have been behind me. Right, right, right. And it wouldn't be, you know, their number three guy. But I would still be getting games, the NFL on Fox. That's that's what happened. I had a bad show. Just because of that tweet. You absolutely. think the tweet sealed? You, oh, absolutely. Really? I was told straight up. Straight up, because now all the attention was on this Fox guy cussing out people right. okay. on social media. Okay. And when they called me to tell me I wasn't going to do the next game, I was straight out told. If that tweet didn't happen, even though it was a rough one, you would still be working in Buffalo uh -huh. that next weekend. You know, I created my own, you know, my own ending to something that I dreamed of doing for a long, long time. But once those tweets were sent, especially with how much of a PR hit the NFL took in the early part of the 2014 season, there was no going back. You couldn't have someone like that on the air representing your company. You just couldn't. I honestly don't know if we're ever going to see anything like this again. In some ways, Mike Goldberg was so bad that he was good. In some ways, because this game was so terrible to watch, if you were not a Vikings fan or a Lions fan, you might have gotten some actual enjoyment over listening to the broadcast just to hear what dumb thing Goldberg would say next, and how he would mess it up this time. But I think it's safe to say that we're not going to hear Mike Goldberg on any NFL games anytime soon. He waited over two decades for his chance, and he blew it badly. Because when you consider the circumstances, in the near 30-year history of the NFL on Fox, this has to be, without a doubt, the worst announcer of all time. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar Gator 9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. 
Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters to help you get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.